Hello and welcome to the show brought to you with the support of Media Proxy. Now, the events of 2020 have meant that access to professional production tools for live streaming have never been more important. Tools to quickly and easily set up and deliver visually interesting live events for markets such as corporate, education, sports and worship are in high demand. Yeah, in particular, integrated units that combine production switching, graphics, recording and streaming provide a switch on and go approach for every level of user. And joining us today is Peter Kavanagh, Technical Director of Polar Graphics, who are the UK and Ireland distributor for the Nagasoft NScaster X1. Welcome to the show, Peter. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Simon. Nice to be here. So let's start with a quick overview of the main functionality of the NSCaster X1. T tell us what it is. What is it? So fundamentally, it's a portable production switcher for use in the markets that you've described. Um, six sources available, two SDI, two HDMI, one from a network source, and one as an internal DDR playback. Uh, provides graphics, audio mixing, picture in picture, mm -hmm. all the standard stuff that you'd expect out of a, a production switching unit. So it also offers um, recording of all the six sources and the program, and most importantly, uh, live streaming to various destinations. So let's just pick up on that and just maybe go into a bit more depth about the connectivity and streaming options we've got available on it. So the unit has, um, in addition to the physical baseband interfaces, there's a lot of networking built in. Um, you can come in from NDI sources for high quality. Uh, you can come in from RTMP streaming sources or HLS. You can bring in feeds from CTTV type cameras. And on the output side, uh, you can live stream out to YouTube, Facebook, uh, any RTMP destination. Cool. So what, uh, we're mainly broadcast. Um, can you uh, sort of highlight any sort of verticals, any other applications other than what we're used to doing? W where are you aiming this product? So where it would fit very nicely is um, things like the corporate media room. So where uh, you have a corporate now, corporates quite often are bringing in their own small media teams uh, to manage things cool. like CEO presentations or just day-to-day -day staff briefings. Very appropriate there. Um, you imagine picture in picture combining a PowerPoint source and a presenter, being able to switch back to the presenter for the live camera shot. Um, in the same vein, education uses. Um, there's been major sales in Europe into a couple of universities where they're placing one of these units in each of the lecture theatres. You've also got um, sporting at all levels. Um, it's kind of perfect for if you like university sports teams or uh, lower leagues or even some of the higher mm -hmm. league stuff when you want to just set up something very quick and easy. And of course, Houses of Worship, where you'll be streaming um, the services on a Sunday to audiences who obviously, for you know the obvious reason, the last six months, haven't been able to actually attend church. So as far as uh, unique selling points of the unit, Peter, have you got a, got a long list? Um, there's four or five points that kind of make it stand out over and above some of the standard run-of-the-mill small lightweight switches. Um, it's a very compact lightweight unit. It's only a kilo and a quarter. It's got a full-size 12-inch touchscreen, which is all of the operation. You have the ability right. to have a secondary PC with somebody running a graphics package. So during a broadcast, you can have second member staff firing graphics off. You've got... Um, Built-in 4G connectivity is standard, so the unit comes with Wi-Fi and 4G. And there's a special variant, the X1A, which is actually uh, has quad 4G aerials on the back, and you can use to um, set up a bonded 4G connection for much higher data rates going out. Uh, it also has a built-in sports mode for the graphics, so you can really quickly set up simple templates for things like football, basketball, etc., and have the operator drive the game. So they're just sitting there adding scores each time. It's very easy to drive, very simple for somebody who's not necessarily a trained graphics operator. So you also have a couple of other um, interesting uh, functions. One of them is called Live Plus. Now, Live Plus allows you to load up an application onto your smartphone, log that smartphone into the unit, and actually use that as an external camera source. So if you're doing um, cool. a sporting event and you want to walk around the fans, you can just do that using your mobile phone and it acts as an extra source into the unit. Um, when you have cameras like CCTV or NDI sources with a pan tilt and zoom head, you also have PTZ control. 
Uh, and finally, it comes in a, a very nice aluminium carrying briefcase, um, very strong. Uh, we've actually had one uh, reseller in Europe. Um, somehow the unit itself in its case got run over and the unit survived quite happily. Of course, you don't have to buy its own belly case. So for, for, for the likes of, um, you know, colleges and sporting uh, uh, facilities, they you know, uh, houses of worship, they might not be familiar with all of our dealers. Where can we buy one? And how much from the start through to the bonded 4G version? So uh, Polar Graphics are acting as the master distributor for the UK and Ireland, and we'll have a range of resellers that we can point any uh, potential customers to if they get in touch with us. Um, Price-wise, you're looking at uh, just under three three k pounds for the base unit. Uh, that goes up right. to about four thousand eight hundred for the bonded four G unit. So thanks for that, Peter. But before we let you go, we've been asking all of our guests who come in to chat to us to tell us something about them um, mm -hmm. that they like to do outside of their proper job or may have done in a deep and distant past that uh, not many people already know. What have you got? Um, well, Typically. I'm finally getting around to starting to learn Japanese. Uh, I've had a, a number of trips wow. to Japan over the last five, six years and um, have become more and more fascinated with the place. So. Uh, I figure for 2020, for, uh, sorry, Tokyo 2020, which is now obviously taking place in 2021, um, I have about six or seven months to get ready and uh, and practice at least some uh, basic stuff. I was going to say, so, so you're, yeah, you're giving uh, yourself seven months to learn a language that's completely different to your, uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> just just yeah. to get started on it, yeah. So uh, I'll be uh, I'll be greeting yeah. people like this. I'll be saying, konnichiwa, hajime mashita. Watashi wa Peter des, which is essentially "Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Peter." Now, when I tried uh, right. practicing this the other day, I was practicing my pronunciation on Google Translate, I got the pronunciation at the end slightly wrong, and it basically came back with "Hello, nice to meet you. I'm a pizza." <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, you know, yeah. I don't know. I'd rather, yeah, I know which I'd prefer. Right. Thank you. Um, <laughs> thanks for watching today. And thanks to Peter for coming on the show to see all our video interviews and kit reviews. Then head over to kitplus.tv, which is brought to you with the support of Media Proxy. And you can find out more about them at mediaproxy.com. Thanks again.